Hello everybody, my name's Kimberly and this is Off-Road Reactions. Today I'm reacting to a channel called Greg Miller, obviously a personal channel, and uh, it's called Expeditions 7 Canning Stock Route Australia. Now, I did have a little quick look at this and what I just just the first uh, 30 seconds or so and that's what I typically do <clears throat> just to get an idea of whether it's going to be something that would be useful to react to and it looks like it's a hyperlapse of the canning stock room now I do lots of hyperlapses when I'm in my glider and it's a great way to kind of capture the whole flight in a very short time he says it's an abbreviated version of our 1800 kilometer trek along the Canning Stock Route in April 2013. So that was actually the year, the last year that I did the Canning. I wonder if we are shown in this uh, video anyway. Oh, actually, it's April, too early for us. Okay, so anyway, let's have a look at it, shall we? I think this might be interesting. They're going south to north. So they're already past North Pool, heading to Well 2 by the looks of this. Pass well too, actually, by the look of that. No stony country, so they're, they're up near, uh, well, six, five or six, somewhere like that. We'll see in a minute. Looks like kind of well five country. Well, there's well six. Unmistakable. Uh, well 6 is one of the most beautiful campsites on the canning stock route. Unfortunately, in peak season, it can be a little bit busy for the canning. Canning is never terribly busy, but um, there's usually people camp there. We don't ever have a problem finding a spot, but uh, it is very popular. Now, one of the things that is interesting about this is, bear in mind, I haven't been on the canning since 2013, and... You know, I used to be able to just remember the whole piece, but I couldn't tell you what, you know, well, 22 looked like, or, you know, well, 35 looked like, although I can kind of picture it. Uh, I couldn't tell you specifics about parts of the journey. Couldn't remember exactly where that wreck was, where this thing was, where that was, until I was actually on the track. And it's a bit like the way Aboriginal people remember country by their songs. I'm kind of remembering it by the routine of describing it to people as I'm driving it. So it'd be interesting to see in this speeded up motion whether I can kind of work out where I am. Um, and some of this stuff will be kind of coming back to me because it's a long time since I saw it. So having said that, if you want to do the canning stock route with me, at Olson's Tours and Training, that business Olson's Tours and Training is a sponsor of this channel and this video. We're doing the trip in, um, trying to remember, July 26, I think it starts. It goes from Alice Springs, roughly Alice Springs, it goes from Earl Dunder actually, around to almost Alice Springs to Tilmouth Well. So it's kind of a big loop. Gun Barrel Highway, Canning Stock Road, Route, Tenamai Road. Uh, and that's the trip that Olson's Tours and Training will be doing. And uh, it will be my first trip along there since 2013. So it's going to be a lot of fun, um, you know. So if you had been contemplating doing the canning, I can tell you now you won't find a better price because uh, it's my first year back for a while. I want to make sure that we get a decent number of people on the trip. Let's go. I 
actually looks a lot like my Nissan in front, but it's not, of course. <laughs> should stop talking while the music's on i think we're getting close to lake aerodrome here now that grassy section there that you saw with all the spin effects kind of kind of low we had a flat tire there one year because there's a, a benchmark a surveyor's benchmark on the left hand side of the track and if you're driving to avoid the corrugations and, and driving a little bit too far left bang <laughs> All right, <clears throat> that's really interesting. Nice little washout there. One of the things you gotta watch for on the Gun Barrel Highway and the Kenning is you gotta watch for long continuous slopes. When you see long continuous slopes, you can bet that they're gonna be washed out. So water keeps running down, <clears throat> because the water keeps running down the track. Now, uh, it's a shame, he obviously didn't see that because it's pretty easy to miss if you saw it. And now the other, the right thing to do here, by the way, people, is not just keep driving. Uh, you've all got shovels, or you should all have shovels. Um, when I'm on Cape York, I also carry a crowbar because the country is a lot harder there. It's not very hard to knock down those sharp edges and make that actually a lot easier to traverse. This is what we used to do back in the day. You know when. We used to drive two-wheel drive vehicles on roads like this. I took my 1965 Corona on a road that my four-wheel drive club considers to be a grade five. And my friend um, that I went to school with used to take his Mazda B1600U to the same places. We drive up sand dunes and all kinds of things. The way we used to do this kind of stuff is maintain the tracks, okay? So it's a really important contribution that you can make as you're traveling. You know, this is not about being better than the other person. Oh, I drove that washout and you didn't. Just fix the washout. Not an ideal place to stop. Uh, that vehicle should have gone a bit further forward and this guy would then have a bit more room to confidently move over that washout. Now, I don't know why he's down in the holes there. It was quite easy to put your wheels in the right place. But uh, anyway, he is. looks a little bit like the country around uh, well 12 it's hard to tell it's as you can see it's all very similar but having done it so many times it kind of little bits come back to me <laughs> okay so this is a little bit of a rough section of track here it looks to me like we're coming up to the Derba Hills and uh, we're going to go around the um, top end of those hills and then round the other side. And the track can be a little bit rough here in places. Like here. So this is the rough section I was talking about. Okay, now I know where we are now. The the um, the other thing I want to say is from here into Durba, there are very few opportunities to gather firewood, and you don't want to be depleting the area around Durba 
of firewood. Although a lot of that there is kind of is wattle and it grows really quickly. Um, if there's enough people taking it, you know, there'll be none left. And it's also very small firewood, so it's not going to burn for a very long time. And people tend to stay at Durba for multiple days. So try and collect your firewood way back if you can. There's not a lot of country that's got firewood in here and you're better off collecting it way, way back. So that track um, <clears throat> was like this last time I drove it. It gets quite washed out here and fills up with loose sand. So we're, we are on the um, side of the Derba Hills here. <laughs> Got a helicopter. It's interesting. <laughs> I don't suspect this helicopter belongs to these people. It might be someone doing a bit of shooting for something else or could even be the rangers. The rangers do a lot of burning from helicopters, but they look to be tracking these vehicles, either filming them or uh, trying to get a good view of them. <laughs> helicopter is still with them so maybe it is their helicopter wow that's interesting anyway it looks like we didn't get any shots of Durba because it looks to me like we are now heading out of Durba that's a savory this is savory creek just before lake disappointment Oh, we're making a late camp. <laughs> Not recommended. That is just so beautiful to me. Really beautiful. So interesting we didn't get any shots around Lake Disappointment either because this looks to me to be north of Lake Disappointment. It could be wrong. And I wonder what the yellow the orange strap is doing. But yeah, this this is north of Lake Disappointment, I'm pretty sure. was interesting but it didn't cover anywhere near as much as I thought it would um, anyway you got a glimpse of parts of the canning stuff route certainly not the whole thing um, but uh, there you go it's well worth the trip it's 
a big trip. It's not one you take lightly. I used to insist that people who come on the canning with me have done other trips with me first. I still think that's a really good idea. Uh, if you're not familiar with what this kind of travel can be, and you're not familiar with the kind of camps that we we establish, then you might find it something that you don't really enjoy. So if but if however you have done a trip with me and you enjoyed that then you know what you're getting you're just getting an awful lot more of it uh, it's very long trip and you have to treat your vehicles with a huge amount of care um, or they just won't make the distance but i encourage everybody to do it at least once